catastrophe, calamity, bad weather. It must be the government's fault. Well, not really. So many of you know I run a group called Interior Weather and Wilderness Watchers. It's a Facebook group that's based on BC interior weather. And I've got uh, 14,600 people who follow this. Sometimes when bad weather events happen, people make comments like, uh, do you think the government is behind this? Or maybe it was HARP, the HARP project, the government's manipulating the weather, things like this. So I want to explain today why I mute those people quickly and uh, sometimes kick them right off the group entirely. I don't want people to come to my weather project and get wrong information, see bullshit. I don't want them to take that out of uh, what we're presenting in the, as a group, right? So we want to present uh, true, scientifically accurate, and uh, reliable information about the weather. It's really easy to point fingers, but when you don't actually know what you're talking about, it's also really easy to uh, lead people astray. Most of you don't know what HARP even stands for. The High Frequency Active Aurora Research Project and what it does. Today we're going to talk about all that kind of stuff. Hoar frost on everything today. <clears throat> Very pretty. Sun's coming up good. And it's warming up a little. It was minus 17 this morning and 16. <sighs> and I'm sweating. And it's not the government's fault. First of all, if you want to blame the government for anything regarding weather, blame them for their lack of action on climate change. Blame them for supporting an economic system that puts human growth and progress above all other living things on the planet. People like to look to conspiracy theories for the different reasons, and some of those reasons aren't honest ones. Uh, the guy who wrote the book on the Harp Project, uh, one of the first quotes I heard him say when watching an interview was, uh, well, we put the book in 20 different languages, and I made a lot of money off of it. I made good money on it, and it paid give me, my Give living. me an estimate of how much you made on that. Um, probably a million bucks. You have no problem with that guy spending bullshit and making money off of it. But if uh, the government might be doing that, ooh, well, the thing is the government's not doing that. Our project is not classified. It's not top secret. In fact, they have open houses up there. You can walk right in. You can call them and find out for yourself and get a tour of the place. I mean, nothing's secret there. The findings are not secret. We'll talk about that today. They're studying the ionosphere. You know, you want to like blame the government for the problems of the world. But I mean, look at how incredibly wasteful and incompetent the U.S. government actually is. I mean, people will point out, well, China is uh, spending $150 million uh, to study uh, weather manipulation and cloud seeding. Well, I mean, come on, $150 million buys you like three fighter jets these days. It's not a lot of money for a project. So uh, don't read too much into some of these things that are happening, and I'll explain what they are today. People want to uh, disbelieve in climate change there must be a reason why these things are happening it must be some kind of a conspiracy so they'll start pointing at things that they don't know anything about do you actually know what harp stands for the high frequency active aurora research project project harp it's called so it's funny because it's project high frequency active aurora research project that's kind of stupid but that's one of the most suspicious things about them and sure what they are doing is uh basically using sort of microwave like technology to uh emit high frequencies into uh, the ionosphere and heat up a small portion of it and study its effects on GPS, on satellites, <clears throat> on radio communications, telecommunications, things like that. Things that uh, will happen will go haywire once uh, we have, say, a strong geomagnetic storm from the sun. It's the ionosphere that protects us from that geomagnetic activity. It's the thing that lights up when the, those magnetic storms hit the Earth and give us those auroras. It's not where weather comes from. Space weather and Earth weather are two different things. You're blaming uh, Earth weather on something that's happening between 80 kilometers and 500 kilometers above us. Well, we know that uh, all the Earth's weather happens at 50,000 feet and below, basically. The Earth's weather is influenced by the, by the planet, by the oceans, by the, grav by the spinning of the Earth. Sure, it's in influenced by many different things, but you know the biggest influences are right here on Earth. HARP is not changing those things. You can't just uh, go around blaming things that you don't understand. Uh, so feel free, look it up. The findings are all uh, there to see. Project Harp is not uh, some mystical, yes, the uh, U.S. military is involved in it, but it's also the U.S. military that has a lot of satellites for communications, GPS, and things like that as well. So, of course, they'd have a vested interest in something like that. But we know uh, heating up things, heating up things in the ionosphere with uh, some 
high frequencies. I mean, you do that when you put your food in the microwave. Uh, there's now police guns that can shoot rays that make your body feel like it's on fire. I mean, can the weather be manipulated and modified? Well, in a short answer, yes. Can it be controlled? Well, no. Can it be changed? Well, a little. If you even look at our own cities, without even some kind of a grand experiment or a government project, if you just look at, uh, say, you go to Pearson International Airport in Toronto or you go to Calgary Airport in the summertime on a convective thunderstormy day and you watch where the clouds start bubbling up, they start bubbling up over that runway because of the reflectivity. The heat kind of rises right off of it and creates some convection. So we see within our own civilizations that uh, within cities, the temperature is a few degrees higher, the radiant heat that's in them. So we know just from how we're building our societies that uh, they have effect on how the weather uh, behaves. And in some cases, uh, I wonder sometimes if our cities are, are uh, somewhat part to blame for some of the uh, storm activity we see some days. And some days that may be true to a degree. Can the weather be changed and manipulated? Well, we are through climate change. We're changing it and manipulating it all the time through climate change. But can it be manipulated directly? Well, yes, we do know that cloud seeding is a real thing. You can actually... Uh, throw some reflective materials in the sky and that may uh, influence humidity to to gather and fall. I mean, it's not uh, rocket science. Its effectiveness is limited, not something you can bank on. It's not something the government can just turn on a switch and be like, it's going to storm here today. So, I mean, people want to find reasons why these things are happening and they don't want to blame climate change. They don't want to believe that that really the problem is this really massive, huge thing and that we're in a lot of trouble. They're looking for other answers and they're looking for answers in the wrong place. Unfortunately, climate change is real and uh, it's very scary. We are manipulating and modifying the planet. I mean, the guy who wrote the book on uh, <clears throat> the Harp, exp Harp exp uh, Project, the Harp Experiment, this is also a guy who says that uh, the Harp Project can control your mind, you know. So uh, if that's the case, I don't know. He can't produce any evidence of this ever happening but he says that these high frequencies can control your mind i mean how much power would it take <clears throat> for uh one little thing in alaska to control the world's weather and people's minds i mean uh i think the energy output is beyond uh what's available there at harp uh nonetheless uh if it can control minds how come that guy's mind isn't controlled is he just somehow better and smarter well he must be because he sold uh uh, books in 20 languages and has made himself a millionaire talking about uh, stuff he has no idea necessarily about but uh, people are quick to believe and seize on to because they want simple answers that they can easily look at think for yourselves thinking for yourself doesn't always produce truth think critically well when you think critically you're going to find out that uh, not everything is the way you want it necessarily to be so what drives me crazy is when uh, you know look at 2017 i predicted uh, the fires to an hour in uh, July that year saying uh, a week ahead of time like well Friday at uh, three o'clock is when uh, that sort of cold front moves through I, I don't see rain coming with it this is bad news there's gonna be a lot of lightning look for fires and things are dry I was right well why am I right I was right about uh, this year you know I said uh, with the extreme heat coming on there's gonna be fires and it's gonna be bad and then lit and burn to the ground after uh, for days I'm sitting there saying fire behavior is gonna be bad in this heat, any fire is going to rage. And I was correct. And I mean, that's because I understand something about the relationship of fire and weather. I've spent a lot of my life learning these things. Just like some of you spent a lot of your life learning how to be an electrician or how to be a plumber. You know what you know. And I'm not going to stand there and tell you, you know, that's not how you plumb in a sink. Because that's what you do. You know, just like I know weather. So there I am predicting big fire and then big fire happens. And then uh, one of the first things uh, someone starts saying is a uh, harp project burnt it off. And it's like, well, A, you don't know anything about the harp project. You don't know, and you're seizing an opportunity to spread disinformation and f fear uh, for something that's already awful as it is. You're being an opportunist, you know, and even those of us in the, G the climate community, we're always... Uh, hesitant to want to say first you know right off the bat like climate change caused that because we want to be sensitive to the victims of such things and not make it about our politics or our bigger picture but uh sometimes you can't avoid talking about it and that was the case with the heat wave in bc this year it exceeded the expectations so beyond 
uh, what would be considered normal. So then, uh, you know, how would I be able to predict these things? How would I know ahead of time if there is some random variable being thrown in and the variable being a human being is out there pushing a button and changing our weather? Well, if that was happening, I wouldn't be able to predict accurately ahead of time what's going to happen because you can't predict an unknown thing such as a person having outside control, right? You know, unless, of course, I'm in on the conspiracy. Do you really think that I'm in on the conspiracy? I'm a dude walking around in the forest. I'm not some government apologist. I've always been uh, mightily opposed to a lot of things the government does. Activism. I've been a, I've done my time in the front lines fighting the government, and I got a pretty good analysis on what the government's uh, good for and what it's not. And uh, like anything, there's some good and there's some bad about the government. Is the government manipulating our weather? No. Climate change was theorized and speculated upon as late, as early as 1880. By the 1940s, a lot of people agreed with it uh, already. It was becoming climate science. By the 1970s, uh, terms like greenhouse effect were already being used. I mean, this is not new stuff that we're talking about. We are making the planet warmer. Is the government at fault for our weather, any particular event? No. Is the government maybe at fault for the climate in general and the direction it's going? Well, yes, there's some responsibility there for sure. Of course, the government's trying to maintain a business climate and uh, it's mining uh, businesses and people for tax dollars and then spending that money to uh, keep its society running so that uh, we can be a profitable uh, venture this place called Canada. So I don't think it's in uh, the Canadian government's interest to, uh, for example, in British Columbia, burn half the province up and then uh, destroy all its roads and uh, make uh, business impossible, make travel difficult, and then have to spend $5 billion uh, federally just to send to the province to help with infrastructure. I don't think that these are things that are in the government's best interest, right? So we know that humans are impacting the planet Earth. We know that our cities raise the temperature. We know that... Uh, Cement can help convection for thunderstorms and can possibly uh, create more rainfall in that regard, more intensified rain. We also know that uh, cloud seeding is possible, though you can't control the weather because the weather's not, you know, even if you have a localized effect, the bigger picture is still the bigger picture. The weather is influenced by all things around it, not just the one thing you're doing. So you know that you can't control what you might be able to manipulate. And also, we now know that uh, HARP is not uh, some secret project to uh, control people's minds or anything like that. It's uh, studying things in the ionosphere up to 500 kilometers above, way above where weather actually happens down here on planet Earth. And we know that human-caused climate change is a real thing and has been uh, theorized and talked about for a long, long time. When we look at climate, we look at uh, weather events, and sometimes... Uh, Especially uh, in the last few years, we see uh, events that are beyond the expectation uh, at times. And that's not because someone's manipulating the weather. Reed Timmer was talking about uh, the long track tornado that it may have cycled. It may have been two separate tornadoes, but there was a tornado on the ground the whole time, 250 miles it went. And it surpasses the expectation of what you think you should be seeing in December in a place that's not Tornado Alley. At, uh, late in the night when tornadoes aren't, the conditions aren't usually conducive for tornadoes to form. So we know that this event exceeded expectations and also the pure strength of the storms where it wasn't just houses swept off foundations near Bremen, Kentucky, I believe where the worst damage was, but in some cases foundations themselves ripped out of the ground. And I don't think I've ever heard of a uh, tornado strength of that. I mean, most of the time if it's a uh, F0, 1 or 2 tornado getting into a small low area like I'm in here. A ditch even may be enough for the wind to pass over you. Uh, there was nowhere safe above ground during that storm if you were in the path of it. So it exceeded expectations and we see that again and again this year. Especially weather systems have been continuously exceeding. You know, we keep using words like uh, unprecedented, but it's not unprecedented anymore. This is the new way. And uh, humans have had an effect on weather. We have had an effect on climate. And it's not a good one. And it's not something you can just explain away by saying, well, the government's doing it. I mean, if the United States government wanted to test uh, weather control and modification on weather, maybe they'd uh, do something over some other country, some enemy country. Maybe they'd do it to China. Well, so maybe the reverse logic is maybe China caused the tornadoes. 
Well, China didn't cause, they don't have a harp. So that's why on Interior Weather and Wilderness Watchers, if you come on my Facebook group after some tragic event and you start blaming things on uh, harp and the government, there's a pretty quick response. It's going to be, uh, you get a 28 day mute. And uh, if you come back again and start talking trash and one of our moderators sees that you've already been muted once, you'll probably get booted. Muted and booted. Because uh, my weather group is not there so that people can come and get false information. It's there to get the best information for the BC interior that we can possibly deliver. For an area that's underreported, the caribou especially, and places like that in BC, that cool weather stuff happens, but uh, because it's not Vancouver, or Kelowna, or Victoria, it doesn't get the headline news all the time. And uh, we're not on the weather network being talked about daily.